So one of the things I really love doing is taking you guys on a journey as what is happening in the bush happens and we're just there to watch and observe. That's what we do. Good morning everyone. Welcome back to another spectacular day on Shimori Private Game Reserve. Well, it undoubtedly is one of my favorite times of the year at the moment. Uh, the bush is just alive as we are going into summertime. So one of the things I really love doing is taking you guys on a journey as what is happening in the bush happens and we're just there to watch it and observe. That's what we do. That's what I really enjoy showing you. So every time we go out, we try and coincide what's happening that time of the year with some of the episodes. So as you know, over many episodes, I've introduced you to Shimwari, where we are in South Africa and the different type of climatic regions that we have in South Africa. Well, we are a, a summer and a winter rainfall destination. Obviously a few peaks in uh, November, December, uh, notably one of them. So we are expecting our summer rains soon. We've had a little bit. Yeah, I'm actually looking at some tortoises now as we're going past. So there's, there's tortoises out in abundance and this area is famous for its tortoises. We're getting our summer rainfall now and we're hoping the big rains are going to be coming very soon. There's been a, a few animals that have dropped youngsters very early. We've already started seeing our young impala lambs and that for me is a good sign. We've had a number of years of drought in this region of the country and we're really hoping that that drought spell will be broken soon and hopefully the, the newborn impalas really early on this time in the season are a good, uh, a good indicator of that. So stick around, join me over the next few minutes and I'll show you some of the most amazing little sightings that are uh, recently joining us on the reserve. So have a look just in front of us over here, there's a, a couple of little newborn red heart beast youngsters with the, with the mothers and there's another, looks like two females over there that are still quite heavily pregnant but obviously a lot of youngsters getting dropped at the moment and the, and the goal uh, especially for open plains herd antelope like this is to drop all the youngsters at the same time so that there's a higher chance of survival with the youngsters. So as you can see it's quite early in the morning, it's only 8 o'clock in the morning and already animals are starting to move to the shade because it's getting quite hot. This time of the year uh, the sun is quite fierce and uh, animals having to employ different survival strategies to keep cool and survive the hot summers. Those two little youngsters, how cute are they? So the, the one thing that we commonly find with these plain species of antelopes is uh, the youngsters, as they're born after the first few days of spending time with the mothers, they'll actually break away and form these little nursery herds where the youngsters actually stay together and then uh, the mothers will come back to them and nurse every uh, couple of hours or so. Uh, but those youngsters forming quite a little bond and sometimes quite playful. A lot of uh, stocking and running around and working on their, on their muscles and their skills because those are the skills that uh, when a lion chases them, they're going to have to employ those, uh, those exact same skills to, to dodge the predator and sidestep and get away. And obviously as youngsters, all the playing and jostling around will not only help with uh, establishing dominance later on in life when they're busy fighting for territories, but also as a predator avoidance uh, technique as well. So I see the, they don't have umbilical cords on, which means they're a, they're a few weeks old. Um, I wouldn't say more than probably about three weeks old, but there are some and, and hopefully as we carry on this morning, we'll, uh, we'll come across a couple that still have very long umbilical cords on them because as I said earlier, we're in the, in the middle of all the youngsters uh, lambing at the moment. So I tried to sneak up on this little group of blessbok over there. Uh, that little youngster was lying down next to the mother. And you can see how young that guy is. He's really, really uh, a newborn. And as we look just across these plains over here, there's just a, a massive amount of, of blessbok through this area. And I can just see little babies interspersed all the way through here. Next to most of the females, there's a little youngster standing uh, next to them. And you can see that little guy's legs are still so long and gangly. And with Blesbok, that, uh, that family of, of antelope, 
these little guys running towards one another now. Amazing that after a, a, a few hours after birth, those youngsters are able to run at the speed and keep up with the, with the adults. And that's one of the things that makes these guys so successful is the, the youngsters are all born after quite a long gestation period. There's a lot of energy goes into making sure those youngsters are, are really ready when they're born. Uh, so that three, four minutes after they've been born, they're already trying to stand up and an hour or two after birth, they're able to move at a decent pace and they know how to stay safe. They know to lie flat on the ground with their ears flat and heads flat when, uh, when mom is away from them. All of these blessed book are coming down for a, a late morning last little drink of water and I say last little drink of water because you can see this pan system is, is almost dry and empty. The last few holes that the elephants have helped dig and the rhinos have been wallowing in still have some puddles of muddy water in that they'll be drinking quickly. Obviously very aware that uh, around the watering hole is a, is a high risk area for predators. And you can hear the babies all trying to call to their mothers, meet up with their mothers not get left behind, they're here for a few seconds, drink, and then they're off. So this female springbok over here has just walked away from us, and, and she's walked into the shade, but the, the girth of that animal was actually shocking at how distended her belly is, so she's almost ready to give birth. I assume that there's not just one of them ready, uh, there's another group of springbok down over there, so there might already be a few youngsters, um, or this is a, a, a nice breeding herd of females where all the females are about to start dropping at the moment. Uh, and to see little baby springboks being born is just uh, absolutely fantastic. A couple of pied crows sitting up at the top of the tree there, I can see a nest just below one of them and they're busy talking to one another as well. And that's. That's the thing this time of the year is even every bird you look at is either flying around with a piece of nesting material or a piece of food in its mouth as it's moving backwards and forwards from the nest and the parents are just working super, super hard at providing food to, uh, to little baby chicks with just uh, open mouths and bottomless stomachs. So there's quite a small little springbok over there. Um, I see only one for the moment. There might still be some youngsters lying down, typically with springbok. They're one of the amazingly good ones at doing this, is the babies when they're born and they're very dark in color. Uh, for the first few days when the, the mother leaves them and, and moves away, uh, they lie flat, flat, flat on the ground with their necks extended and their ears flat, just to be as camouflaged from, uh, from any predators. And often what you'll see is the cheetahs moving up onto the ridges on these open plains and they'll just sit for hours and hours busy watching waiting for any movement and then they'll, they'll spot that, uh, that one little, little springbok that, uh, that gives away his position and they'll run down and, and uh, take out a youngster. As we were driving along this road and for about 500 meters uh, we had this orange-eyed longhorn busy flying next to us uh, just an incredible insect and you know obviously another special time of the year uh, as we move into summertime the bush just erupts with insects and I you know there's some really really incredible insects and just look at this guy uh, an orange-eyed longhorn he's got these uh, orange spots on him over here but the thing that would make it a longhorn beetle is the antenna are exceptionally long way longer than the whole length of the body. Interesting, interesting insect, but uh, just amazing how it was flying along right next to us for such an extended period of time uh, through this open area. And then the first bush he managed to settle onto uh, landed and he'll, uh, he'll settle up here for a couple of hours. When your impalas go to lamb, they're obviously in the big breeding herds, the females will break away and uh, go and give birth separately in these quiet bushy areas. So you can see there's a tiny, tiny little impala, newborn. And this is only the third or fourth one I've seen within the last few days, so definitely early. So she'll, she'll spend a few days alone from the, the main breeding herd that she comes from. And she'll spend a few days busy bonding with that youngster, making sure it's good and strong and healthy. 
and uh, the youngster is bonded to her and then she'll move back to the breeding herds and uh, within a few days time we'll have these big aggreg aggregations of uh, impala youngsters uh, but for the meantime the, the really newborn guys uh, that are only a day or two old maybe three are, are separate by themselves like this well there you go guys i hope you enjoyed uh, spending a bit of time with us this morning as we uh, showed you what's happening in the bush in these early days of summertime don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're not uh, it's been great hearing from everybody and getting the comments and feedback so keep it coming and uh, we hope to see you around here sometime soon. Until then, be safe.